morning, Mayong Buntag, um, Mindanao. So, I'm here to tell a story about a small university in the south of the Philippines, in particular in Cagayan de Oro, in Mindanao. So, uh, we are a Jesuit university, so it is our charism to help people in need since uh, the very beginning, we've done relief. Uh, during Sendong, uh, we were grateful to our partners. We were able to raise about, uh, about 85 million to, to help rehabilitate many of the survivors. And then in 2013, so these are some of our works in Sambuanga, Bohol, and Visayas. Uh, we became the, and even in Marawi, because we are close there, and in Tulunan uh, this year. However, um, our work has evolved into just giving relief to a response that is competency-based. Uh, if you see there, there's, this is like our operational chart as to how to proceed if there are disasters of uh, the kind. We have several units involved, so not only on giving food, but in particular in giving competency, psychosocial, engineering needs, etc. However, we've realized that responding to disasters is not enough. It, uh, the, the thought is, what if we can do something before disasters happen? So back in 2003, some of my students did some fire hazard mapping. We did not even have GIS that time, so we just used Photoshop. Anyway, Photoshop also has a range of colors with numerical equivalents, so we were able to use uh, this tool. Then it has evolved. Um, in 2008-2009, we did a flood uh, risk mapping uh, together with uh, my mentors in De La Salle. So that's why this is an Ateneo La Salle collaboration. It, on, it can only happen when there are disasters, no? Okay, so we're able to do this with the uh, community. And finally, we're able to come up with risk maps, multi-hazards. Uh, probably the novelty of these maps during that time is because during that time, the maps are usually at regional scale, maybe at least or the most at city. But as they say, the devil is in the detail. So that's why we did a zonal uh, risk uh, assessment of one barangay with multi-hazards. And we're glad that the barangay, Carmen, in this case, the most populous barangay in Cagayan de Oro, used this for city, uh, for their barangay development plan. And you can even still see it on their website after 10 years. Uh, this is a place called Kalakala. And uh, basically, we also did a study on, on this. Again, uh, we zoom into household level on uh, risk assessment. And unfortunately, this was done in 2009. Two years later, Sendong came and basically almost everybody there was killed during that uh, fateful night. Uh, it seems our work did not uh, fully uh, reach the community, no matter. We already did um, uh, capacity building in, in the place. So we continued working. Um, this is a simplified a simulation, we just overlaid in, in the map, this is Cagayan de Oro, and that, that river you see in the middle, like the snake, is the Cagayan de Oro River. We overlaid the contour, basically, to show the elevation of those places. When you see dark green, those are very low elevations, while lighter ones are uh, on higher elevation. And because my students were very fond of Facebook, so we tried to collect data from Facebook, of course, you need to filter them and locate where are these areas. And we tried to place pictures if these floods, if these places were flooded, so that elevation were flooded. And my students were more creative. They were able to brush this up and say that this is the flood prone area in case the 2009 flood happened. So we exhibited this map in, a, in the university. We invited government and many other partners, but no one came. So only us who eat the snacks, no? After. And one month after, Sendong happened. This is the actual flood footprint. It's even more what happened to 2009. I'll just proceed to the next slide because this is on scale. Actually, in 1999, the Mines and Geosciences Bureau did also a study saying that the blue 
uh, outline is where the water could actually overflow the river. And then this is our small simulation in 2011. And this is the actual flood map in 2011, one month later. So I think science is also a, a gift to us, which we can really use uh, to warn people. The challenge is for them to listen to us. Um, we, other than the engineering part, we want to understand the human aspect um, and the governance. We were able to retrace uh, in the 1950s, these are the built up areas along this river. So maybe if there was a great flood, very few people were hit. Then 20 years later, another 20 years, another 10 years, and another 3 years. Where are people living? So this is what we say the perfect recipe for disaster just waiting to happen. For a long time, we've already known where are the danger areas. Of course, the problem is we do not know when will this happen or exactly. But although we have instruments now like Project NOAA, which can help us. We also extend, um, this is just to show you, this is what happened in 2011. This is what happened in 2009. And people are saying there is no warning. That is the warning, and that's two years warning. Our road became a river, but in, during Sendong, it became a ground zero. It's the same street. And we've extended our study to, to understand why was the water during Sendong about 30 mm of rain for six hours. So basically, uh, that amount of water can become a two-story flood. Basically, one inch per hour in six hours is only six inches. But why can that become a two-story flood? But we introduced, we, we always emphasize that we are in a river basin. There is connectivity in the places and the landscape that we live. This is the Cagayan de Oro boundary, but this is the Cagayan de Oro river basin. Uh, roughly, we did a very simple computation, and I'm sure the engineers here will not agree as to the the accuracy, but let's say about this area, given that rain, that's 11,000, maybe just half of that because not all water goes to the river, but that's still 5,000 cubic meter. Maybe this room is about 1,000, so five of this room per second passing through your house because of the river basin concept. No? So we need that for at least to imagine. What. And we also checked the slopes, but in particular, the ecological integrity upstream in Bukidnon, the ones below are basically Bukidnon and some parts of Lanao. You see that the dark green are the very, the very uh, forest, are very small. A lot of it is already agri-industrial based. So basically, when water falls, so it, it falls fast no? to, to Cagayan de Oro. Uh, that is Dr. Mahar Lagmay. We work with him quickly during their project with UP Dream, and I'm so happy that they used our maps for validation. So, again, as I've said, uh, we were so elated no, when we realized that uh, UP has used some of our very humble products in the in the south. No, they say that their simulations were validated with the actual flood maps that we did. Uh, the maps were also used during uh, the aftermath of Sendong. These are uh, personnel from the International Organization for Migration. We could just have wished that it's a, it's a digital map, but we do not have that resources. So that's why they're very manual, no? And then this is our city mayor uh, because Cagayan de Oro joined the livable cities. Um, competition and we actually, well, not we, the city won first prize no, during that year. But we're glad again that uh, one of the aspects that or the criteria is because of this is there is risk sensitivity to, to the plan or to the sub documents. And then there is a uh, JICA is now busy with Cagayan de Oro um, because they'd like to build a dike there. No, and at first thought, we were happy in the report, uh, even if we did not have uh, index citation in the journal, but JICA, uh, International Development Agency, cited, used our data to design the dike. 
but there is a problem here because the dike that they'll build is good for a 25-year flood. If translated to Cagayan de Oro, this is the Pablo flood, which is not as devastating as the Sendong flood, which is a 50-year flood. So when I asked the PWH, so what will happen if Sendong will come back? Well, the answer was very honest. It will overflow. no? And this is an 8 billion uh, dike. Uh, utang, utang, no? So, may utang ng Cagayan de Oro. And when Sendong comes, we still get flooded. So, what we did, uh, the ILG was there in the forum together with our Archbishop, who is also a Jesuit and very active in the environment, said that, okay, XU will proceed with an uh, uh, independent study of what will happen, do a simulation if the dike is already built. But pro bono, no? But we work under the church, so we cannot say no. So, this is the scenario if there is a Pablo flood. So, clearly, there are no overflow because that is the design criteria. But if Sendong will strike us again, and this is the dike, there will be some areas that will get flooded. And if you zoom in these areas, these are houses, but if I look at this, okay. These are, a lot of them are residential houses. So we thought that DPWH will get angry with us, and many of them were actually my former students. But uh, actually, we were glad because they were happy that we presented this study because now they have retrofitted the design of the, the dike you know, to consider this possible scenario. Uh, of course, this is the former president, not, not the politics. No, that's not my point here. But anyway, uh, during Sendong, about... Uh, a week after Sendong, Pinoy actually came to CDO and said that uh, there was a press conference. So one of our board of trustees, because I'm not allowed to enter, no? teacher, not allowed to enter. So uh, was able to go in the press conference and said that this is this PowerPoint, this map's given. So this already happened in 2009, but it seems nothing has happened. So the president said, okay, going back to the danger area is no longer permitted. He directed the PNP director that your order, the order is to ensure that that area is not uh, populated again. One year later, Pablo hit us and we have zero casualty because no one was already living. My, my point is uh, the maps were actually drawn by my students. No, I'm just the supervisor. Uh, this is how much power our students can do, no? even influencing the decision of the president of the land. And uh, because we were saying that these areas cannot be habitated anymore, so we were also tasked to do a resettlement site. Uh, Xavier did our engineering department, etc. did a um, housing project for more than 500 families who survived the flood for free, no? The Jesuits have many lands, no? So they just gave it. They did not give it to the faculty member. <laughs> Very quickly, uh, this, this is a works from the Manila Observatory and we work closely with them as uh, sister institutions. At least in Cagayan de Oro or Northern Mindanao, this is the average temperature. We see that it's getting warmer. However, our rain, if we look at it, it's also getting fewer by the day. So these are daily precipitation. When I saw these maps, I'm really afraid because it seems that there is more evaporation because it's warmer. But where are the rain going when on daily basis they don't come down? So this is really scary for me because it means that mass or water is probably stored somewhere and it would pour so hard. And indeed, uh, in 2017, for example, in just a matter of about six hours or even four, we had about 150 mm of rain in January, while the average, according to Pag-asa, for 31 days supposedly is only about 85. So rains now in our place come by the month, but only in a matter of hours. And of course, our canal are not ready for, for this other than they are clogged. So, I will go quick. Uh, we work with the United Nations Habitat and together with the city, we try to do simulation very quickly. If this, uh, the canal here is silted as it was about two years ago and when it is clean as designed. 
So we very quickly I'll just go to the results. So this is the flood scenario. We see that if this is the silted uh, scenario, while the, what if the canals are clean? And so we use this as IEC material. It's very graphic to uh, the community. You will see here what we did after the study was to, and then the, we were glad that the city and the mayor himself went to the Stero, no, to the uh, creek area, and we're happy because um, now it's it's they have had uh, a setback, and because of this, Kagan uh, de Oro again won no the 2018 Asian Townscape Awards. Uh, Savior did not win any award, no, but we're happy that people we help always win the award. That is the price of a teacher, ba? No? <laughs> okay, and so uh, uh, this is just another project in Agusan, uh, but. I'll just go fast. My, my point is this, um, um, in this project, we're able to uh, show that the integrity of the ecology or upstream is really important to what will happen downstream. And so that's why now we have VEST. Yesterday, I, ho I uh, heard about ecosystem services. So Xavier University works with many, many institutions to work on valuing ecosystems together. Basically, the money is to rehabilitate the mountains of Kitanglad uh, there in Bukidnon. And we have IP partners who, who does the, the job. And uh, if, my, if I may insert, no, uh, many of us are, because most teachers are flying to conference from one to another, we have flights for forests. This is a global Jesuit initiative. Uh, in every flight that you fly, uh, you can donate five dollars, and it will go to the mountains of Bukidno, no, to rehabilitate the forest. Uh, sure, this will not your funds will not be corrupted, no. Uh, this will this is managed by priests. Oh, uh, maybe sometimes we do not know. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is on earthquakes, and uh, very quickly, together with La Salle, um, we we did some scenarios. What if a very big earthquake happens in CDO, and about half of our schools are at risk? And so we presented this to the mayor again. Uh, the mayor is there, who is a champion on schools, and saying that, okay, we should, uh, Xavier, you presented to us the problem, so what is the solution? No? So it, our research cannot end with identifying the problem. So this is the SCOSO already discussed with uh, by Doc Gigi earlier, and we had an app developed, and the PRISM H, which he also discussed. Very quickly, I just want, after the... Uh, Prism H project, the mayor pronounced that um, the city engineer's office should ensure the structural stability and resilience of every building project. No? So that is a decision made by the mayor as he realized from the results of the study. So now, even without the storm, we continue to work with bringing science, those some equations there in, in many other sectors of society. And we link a lot with governance uh, experts so that, and then community, these are barangay uh, chairman, no? rolling around our venue to do. And of course, I continue, I always emphasize that this is to get, I do, I did, I do these things with my students. And now we're working with the National Resilience Council. Uh, they've um, piloted, I think, in nine cities, and we're the academic partner in Cagayan de Oro. Basically, we're like a PASCO no, of the city, to check on scorecards, and these scorecards have been uh, agreed by national experts and tailored to what is needed. And so, for example, you'll see, this is quite, there's a prepare, adapt, and transform phase. And just to zoom in, for example, on prepare, they say that that is a CDRA or the Climate Disaster Risk Assessment Based Inventory of Public Schools, etc. So a lot of science is being used no, uh, in order to review the scorecard and the documents uh, by the city. But um, most importantly, it is not checking on them, but it's more on working with them. Because, uh, for example, in this program, because we saw that there is lack of GIS capability in some of the units in the city, so we trained them. And this, the, the lower picture is we also uh, work with the city building office and uh, the building office and the city engineer's office 
on post earthquake assessment of structures which we uh, learned from De La Salle. So uh, again, I think that the point is journeying with them, not just checking what they've done. And so to institutionalize all this in 2013 on the 80th year of the university, we institutionalized the DREAM program, but now it has evolved to the XU Cadre or the Climate and Disaster Real uh, Resilience Program. We have uh, five pillars to okay to end because in Xavier Tineo we cannot end with equations. No, there has to be reflection after. No? So um, they say that uh, the word disaster unfortunately came from the stars. No, this astro, an unfavorable star or planet. How sad. But anyway. Um, my point is, uh, we've been doing this uh, very humbly, a very small scale, if you may, no? but we develop solutions, no? not just identification of the problem, but solutions with and for the community. For us, it has become very important that they are part of the process. And second, uh, we're not doing any banner here, but basically we've been, done, been doing this even before RA10121. So this is sustainable development for us, no? and uh, that is important until now, especially with the release of Laudato Si. And finally, uh, you know, Ignatius was a soldier, and um, the, the term cadre is actually, uh, in military, also a group of uh, specialists no? in order to train uh, the, the army. So we continue this mission of training, of uh, doing things uh, for the mission, but even if without honorarium, no, we continue to do it with gratitude because we are grateful that we are uh, given a chance to express how we love. Thank you.